Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a game in Unity and welcome to episode 41. So this time around we're going to take a little break from development and we're going to look at creating a button on our main menu which will allow us to open an external URL. For example, if you have a website for your uh, team or whatever, you could have that. And then we'll also look at pausing our main game. So firstly, let's head to our main menu, the title screen. So from here, we did this quite a while ago, if I remember, and it is basically just, I just want to quickly recap to remind myself what exactly this is, because it's been so long since we did it. And it was just simply this, wasn't it? Uh, an animated, technically, uh, little scene. So I'm going to add down the bottom here some quick UI, in this case a button, to say open, for example, a Facebook page. So game object, UI, and let's go with button. Now, obviously, you can change this button to not necessarily say button, but it could be an image, for example, the Facebook image or Twitter or whatever. Uh, it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to anchor it to the bottom right. Zero out the positions. Uh, double click to get it back in focus. I'm going to place it about there and let's have it square rather than rectangular so let's change this to 100 by 100 and let's change the text on the button to just say facebook page in fact i'll just have it facebook <laughs> nice and simple okay so the idea of this is we need to create a script and it is relatively simple. So the reason I'm doing this now is because sometimes it's always nice to take a little break from main development and work on a couple of other things within the game. It's not recommended to solely focus on one thing at a time unless you're kind of massively focused on that and you're intent on getting there. But in something like this, take time out to do something like this. So right click, create C sharp script. And let's have this as URL opening. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. And it is a real quick script. There's nothing too fancy about this. Um, it becomes pretty obvious what's going to happen when we get to it. So we're going to get rid of void update, void start. We don't need them. We don't need any variables either. It's as simple as creating a public void and we can call it whatever we want let's have it as open link open close bracket open curly bracket and within it all we need to do is have application dot open url and in brackets and quotes we put the url we want to open so i'm going to have this as my facebook page so http facebook dot com slash jimmy vegas 3d and then obviously close your quote close your bracket semicolon and save so heading back into unity uh let's add a new game object create empty uh f2 and let's just call this url object and let's drag and drop url opening onto there so then we know how to set the button up. I'm not going to teach you that all over again. So let's quickly do everything we need to do. And we called it, oh gosh, I can't remember what it was called. It was open link, wasn't it? So now if we press play, it's not a fancy looking button. It's not massively brilliant, but if we click it, it opens up Facebook or whatever link we have in that exact page. Perfect. That's all there is to it. It's nothing drastically difficult at all. So we've taken a break there. Let's see that scene and let's head back to our main game. Area 001. Okay, so if you have any problems at any point with any of these scripts that we use here, remember they're always on the website for free. Head over there if you want to download them in the downloads and assets section. So again, you can pause most games. Let's get to that. So we basically need to create a script and it's going to be a little bit different to what we've done uh, on a lot of levels previously. It's not technically an advanced script, but I wouldn't consider this to be 
uh, an absolute beginner script. So you can see how far we've come along in our development cycle. So let's right click, create C sharp script, and let's call this pause game. <clears throat> now then, we're going to need to use an extra namespace in this one because the idea of what we're doing is we need to kind of freeze everything, including the player. And we need to actually turn off a certain script to actually be able to freeze the player in place. So we need to use the namespace using Unity Standard Assets dot characters dot first person semicolon so that just basically refers to our first person controller and it means we can access any components attached to the first person controller now in this we don't need a void start and we don't need any notes so let's get rid of them and we need two uh, variables the first one is going to be the player itself so public game object and uh, we'll call it the player simple uh, next one is going to be a bool because we need either a true or false condition so public bool let's just call it paused by default we'll make equal to false and semicolon. Now before we go any further we have to figure out which button on the keyboard we're going to use to pause the game. Now I'm going to use the escape button in this so just to double check we've got everything set up correctly let's go to edit project settings and input and over here we've already added a couple here but I'm going to use cancel because the positive button that we're going to use is escape and that's what I'm going to use so we need to remember the name cancel. So if we head back to our script, we need to have if input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes cancel quote close bracket close bracket open curly bracket. Then we also need to then check if the paused bool is equal to true or false. So if paused equals false so basically if the game is actually active then what we need to do is the following we need to change the time scale in the game to zero so time dot time scale and remember this part here is case sensitive the t in time scale is lowercase the s in scale is uppercase equals zero semicolon at this point we will make paused equals true semicolon so it's vital we have this otherwise we have a problem of where we can continually pause the game for no reason whatsoever so we need to make sure that paused is true at this point what we need to do is have the player dot get component and in spiky brackets, first person controller, open close bracket, dot enabled equals false. So this renders us incapable of actually moving or doing anything with the controller. So the game is literally uh, paused. It's, it's frozen. Uh, occasionally, you may need to add this line and it depends how Unity is playing Sometimes I've, I've seen it, um, the ability to have this in. Sometimes I've seen it decide just, no, I'm not going to show the cursor. So it's always wise to at least have cursor dot visible equals true, semicolon. Now, we've completed that if statement, which is all good and well, but obviously we want to unpause the game. And we want to still do the same principle of pressing the escape button to unpause the game. We may have options uh, on screen at this point to say, you know, resume or cancel or whatever, but I still like to have the ability to have escape as an unpause button. So we now need to go and do an else statement. So beneath here, 
else, open curly bracket. So basically, if paused is equal to true, then what we do is the player dot get component and same as above first person controller oh, close bracket dot enabled equals true semicolon so basically reverse engineering what we've already done paused would be equal to false at this point and time dot time scale is equal to one semicolon and save. So if we head back to Unity, we need to constantly have this script monitoring our input. So naturally it would go on an object within the game. That's why we use the update because we need it to constantly monitor. So game object create empty, F2 to rename and let's call it pausing object. And then we just need to attach that to the object. So pause game straight onto there. The player, we just need to set that variable in there. Uh, if I can find the player, there he is. Into there. And you can see that's our pause bool right there, which is currently set to <laughs> false, which we would hope. And if we press play, so naturally we Where can. Am I? wander around. I need to find a way out of this Do wood. everything we need to. And then we can press escape to pause the game. And you can see, perfect. That is how we want. The entire game is paused. Press escape again and we're back in the game. And um, I think what we need to do here, as I've just noticed, is let's have cursor dot visible equals false semicolon and save so you may need to put that in as well so one quick extra thing we're going to do here we've paused the game that's all good and well but what about having some basic at least basic ui for now it's something that i'm going to go into more in the next episode but let's at least have something appear to make it seem like we have a pause menu so if we go to ui and let's have a panel double click right click and rename and tab pause menu uh, i'm going to have this as centered width i'm going to have as 300 height i'm going to have as 400. so this will be our pause menu and let's untick to turn it off and back into our script let's add in an extra variable <coughs> excuse me public game object pause menu semicolon <clears throat> and as soon as we press the escape button what we need to happen is before we even set the time scale to zero let's have that appear so pause menu dot set active true and then obviously we need the inverse of that in the else section so pause menu dot set active false semicolon and save and you've guessed it now all we need to do is add that to the variable in the inspector panel uh, to get the right place let's drag it over press play and yep we've been through this we know Where what we're doing we can see everything in I place find a way so now this wood. let's test out there we go. So you could imagine that this would be the pause menu. Perfect. So we've got the game pausing. We've got what we need to happen. Next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to create some UI for that pause menu to give us a couple of different options. For example, if we want to resume, we want to quit, we want to go to main menu, things like that. And we'll also look at starting to at least create a QTE, which is a quick time event in the dungeon that we've got going so we're going to get back into development uh next episode is going to be more scripting as you would probably expect so guys until that next episode uh remember you can always get these scripts on the website if you've got any questions you need help please 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 ask in the comments below if i can't help you or i don't see the comments because i get 
tons of comments every day. I, it's hard to respond to them all. But if I can't, you know, there's plenty of people out there who have the knowledge and have everything that could probably help you. So please use the comments to, for your own gain. You know, don't be afraid to ask. So guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.